In 1954, Frank Lloyd Wright designed a concrete block house in Cincinnati, Ohio. His clients were automobile dealer Gerald B. Tonkins and his wife, Rosalie Tonkins. Gerald took the lead in the project, recording the construction of the house in great detail on 16 millimeter film. Gerald and Rosalie moved into the completed house in 1955 with their two young children. They raised their family in the Tonkins house. But in the mid-1960s, Gerald and Rosalie separated. Rosalie left for New York, while Gerald remained in Cincinnati and kept the Tonkins house. When I met him, he owned this beautiful house. I never had seen a Frank Lloyd Wright house. I had no idea about it, and the house meant nothing to me other than it was so unusual, and it was beautiful. Beverly Joy Ganson married Gerald B. Tonkins in 1971 and moved to live with him in the Tonkins house. It was part of him, and it became part of me. I really loved this house and I got used to it, and I knew every crack and everything, every cobweb that was in the house. We both loved it. It was interesting. We both loved it, and it just worked well together. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed having parties together for it. When it was just a place you were always proud to bring someone home to. I met Beverly when she had finally decided to sell the house. Very excited. Yeah. A bit breathless. Let's, and it is their baby. The house is their baby. Now it's going to be our baby. So this is like a really big deal. Excited. OK. OK. <laughs> My husband, Lucas Rooker, and I, Safina Oberoi, were the lucky new owners. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm really thrilled that you're buying it. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. there are people that we've turned away. Really? Really. They wouldn't understand the house. They wouldn't take care of it such, you know. So, you're the chosen ones. Hey, thank you. <laughs> and you, I, you will have thank many, you. many happy years here. Beverly had done an excellent job of furnishing and maintaining the Tonkins house. It appeared in mint condition. It turned out this house is one of the finest of his Usonian automatic homes that he ever built. Which was his idea of building good design for ordinary, regular... Ordinary work. people, right. And this is all right furniture. It's all, all this all of this all is the one he right designed. Furniture. Such a control freak, no? Huh? Control freak. <laughs> totally. <laughs> An egomaniac. And here is the bedroom. A lot of built-in drawers here in the closets. People sometimes have said it looks like a ship in the night. Beverly and Gerald lived together in the Tonkins house for almost 20 years. In 1989, Gerald passed away after a long illness. A few years later, Beverly met and married an old school friend, Sherman Vangrove. Sherman moved into the Tonkins house with Beverly. The house saw Beverly's children grow up and have children of their own. By the time Beverly sold the Tonkins house to us, she had stewarded it for 42 years. All right, so this is now our house. This is, uh, we moved yesterday, which means we just brought in a whole lot of boxes of our stuff. We didn't bring any furniture because 
all the Frank Lloyd Wright furniture comes with the house at great expense and now this is our house which is a bit scary Lucas and I moved into the Tonkins house in 2015 oh. but we had barely enjoyed it for a few weeks when disaster struck what had begun as a minor leak in the roof developed into a major fault line and after the first big storm the roof began to fail and now the roofers are here oh to look at how to fix the roof but no one seems to have any solutions only lots of concerns but it's very clear the roof is full of water water penetrated the upper layer of the roof and it sat waterlogged on the house like a wet sponge it was so wet that it was sprouting moss and clover before we knew it we were building a giant barn over the house to keep it dry while we rebuilt the roof i'm getting really kind of panicky um not because I think we can't solve the situation, but because I feel it's no longer in our control. Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I just don't get it. You're doing so much all at once. You plunged in right away with a lot of construction going on around you that you're not used to and you're taking it way back to the skin and bones level, which probably is right. In the end, we found the right experts to completely rebuild the roof. It took years and it still felt like a miracle. Now I look here, I'm standing on this roof and it doesn't feel wrong. Look, it's dry. It's been raining like crazy. The damn thing is dry. <laughs> like... Yeah, it better be. <laughs> That's the whole point, Andrews. Here's our work area. That's where we have all the plants of the house, uh, all the plants that we're using for the restoration for the roof and so forth. But it's also our dream area because one of the things we're doing is envisioning how the future would look like. We've made a model here that captures what we believe this house could look like if the portion that Frank Lloyd Wright has designed but wasn't built is in fact built. The swimming pool and the significant build up in front of it. I think it's gonna be exquisite. I really do. I mean, you've got the bones here and you're gonna wind up with a real sheer beauty. In the end, it's going to be magnificent. Beverly had always been encouraging to us. But I stopped inviting her to the Tonkins house. I was just deeply embarrassed at how long the restoration was taking. When I was finally ready to reach out to Beverly, I was too late. On July 15, 2023, Beverly Tonkins Van Grove passed away. Beverly's daughter, Margie, kindly invited me to join the family at the funeral. 15 minutes after mom, Ma Bev, Gigi, Beverly died, something magical happened. A rainbow appeared outside Margie's and my window and remained there for 20 minutes. We like to believe it was Margie's mom saying goodbye to us. People talk about her beauty and glamour. She had a sense of style and an eye that were unparalleled. But most do not know how hard her life was. When Gerald lost his business, the two of them started an army surplus store in a rundown building in Northside. That business enabled them to keep their magnificent house that was such a part of their lives and identities. 
Beverly's family scattered her ashes in the garden of the Gerald and Beverly Tonkins house. Now that she has passed on, I realize that Beverly bequeathed an incredible legacy, a whole lifetime of care to Lucas and myself. I now find myself believing that the restoration will be completed and just as Beverly had wanted, the Tonkins house will be magnificent again. Mm -hmm.